everybody, Peter here from the Esoteric Order of Gamers and welcome! Um, today I'm going to talk about some Games Workshop stuff. Now you may know that Games Workshop send me stuff for free to review and to show to you. Now this isn't something that happened overnight. I've been a fan of Games Workshop games since the very, very earliest days. I bought my first White Dwarf magazine in 1978, issue number four, and I've been playing their games ever since. I've got a whole heap of the old big box games there and I'm very proud of them. So I've been a big fan of their games for a long time. I haven't always played the big ones, Warhammer 40,000 and in the old days Warhammer Fantasy Battle. I haven't played those ones a lot. I was more into the skirmish games like Necromunda and Man of War and uh, Mordheim and Blood Bowl and stuff like that. But I've been painting their miniatures and playing their games for years. So I was very happy when just a few years ago I managed after much effort to get onto their review list. Now this was really really hard to do and I had to pull a few strings but now they send me free stuff. Now obviously this is fantastic from my point of view because I love these games and it's great to get them free. And there's no denying that Games Workshop games are very expensive. They do cost a lot of money. Now the reason I don't go on about that too much these days is that I used to go on about it a lot and eventually I just sort of got tired of talking about it because we had to sort of get used to the fact that they, they are expensive and they're going to continue to be expensive. It's a huge publicly listed company. It's beholden to its shareholders and the more money it can make, the better really. And I guess uh, as frustrating as that is, it also means that the company thrives and keeps making cool stuff. But sometimes the prices do make my eyes water, I must admit. So that all aside, I got this bunch of stuff in separate lots and I thought because they're all sort of unusual smaller items that I'd just do a bit of a roundup and show them all in one go. Um, there's some weird stuff here, like this thing, Warhammer Heroes. I got this just the other day and I had no warning that I was getting it. Usually I get a warning that I'm getting stuff, but this one was a complete mystery. It just showed up, so that's a weird one. These are two more of the sort of beginner sets. Um, they're sort of to designed to introduce younger players and new players into the world of Warhammer 40,000. And then this is rather exciting, which is the new Necromunda core rulebook. So let's have a look at these particular games and also talk a little bit about the long history of Necromunda and what's happened to it and why we've got to this point where we've got this new core rulebook. It's going to be an interesting grab bag of Games Workshop related stuff and a little chat and ramble down memory lane and all the rest of it. So I hope you'll continue watching. Let's get into it. So let's start with let's start with the weirdest one. This one, Warhammer Heroes. Now this is covered with uh, Japanese. Right, I think it's Japanese actually. Maybe that's Korean. I'm not exactly sure. It's very though. It is made in the UK, so perhaps it's specially designed for an overseas market. I don't know. I don't know anything about this Warhammer Heroes thing. And this looks like a sort of retail box of it, doesn't it? I presume these are sold separately, and this is how retailers put this on the shelf, because we've got eight here in this little box. Um, and it is 2468. There's eight pictures on the cover here. It just says, mysteriously, one Citadel miniature. But there are pictures of the different eight types on the front. Um, I presume it also says somewhere that the miniatures come unpainted, because it's showing the painted ones there. So if we open up one of these little boxes, what do we get? It's sealed. Ah. A little plastic thing. There we go. <laughs> one sprue. Um, yeah, one space marine. There you go. Um, you've got, this is apparently Brother Thysaur. So I guess the idea is to sort of try and collect the lot. Um, as I said, it's all in, it does look like Japanese. I think it's Japanese. I hope I'm right there. Um, there's the instructions to make it. And it says, collect them all and form Kill Team Strike Force Justian. Now, I did get a notice about this. I remember now because I was thinking, what's Strike Force Justian? And there it is. So you've got Brother Justian, Brother Acules, Flavian, Marius, De uh, Decian, Decian, Thysor, and Viginus, Viginius, Vig, Vignius, Vignius. Ah, these cod Latin names. So there you go. I don't, I presume, I presume these aren't being sold in the U. I don't know why they're sending them to me because I don't know how many Japanese viewers I have. Certainly, well, hopefully I've got a few. And you can see there's a English Kill Team stat sheet. There you go. 
And there's a little QR code on the back for light rules for playing Warhammer 40,000 Kill Team. It's also got a tactical ploy, ploy on the back, transhuman physiology. Um, and then you've got a Japanese version as well, fully Japanese. So, yep, a special little thing for the Japanese market, it would seem. Um, and I, I feel a bit weird because I've got sort of, I've got a full kill, kill team here. I've got eight miniatures. Um, now, the thing is, of course, because I'm way down in New Zealand, I get this, sent these things a little bit later than other people. So it's really impossible for me to paint everything uh, that Games Workshop sends me. I do the absolute best to build them all so you can see the finished build, uh, built miniatures, but I don't have time to paint them as well. Um, but yeah, it's always nice to add a few Space Marines to your collection. So presumably there, if you've got them all, you've got a kill team. Now the question is, can you buy these in one lot? Uh, here we go. I found it. It's on the outside of the box. Blind buy? Question mark to collect. You know something? Okay, let's get on to something here. I hate the blind buy model. Always have, always will. I remember I took a break from gaming for a long time and uh, when I was younger. And when I came back, the whole Magic the Gathering thing had taken off and was sort of over its first wave of popularity. And I never got into Magic the Gathering because soon as I heard that it was a blind buy thing, that you got the collectible card game method, I just thought, I'm not going to buy anything that I don't know where I don't know what I'm getting. It's just no way. You're not going to sucker me into that. And I've always looked at it with horror. I just don't know why people buy things um, when they don't know what they're going to get. I, I understand there is that feeling of like, oh, what am I going to get this time? But what is the point of buying these? Buying a new one and then opening it and finding that you've already got the one that you just bought a moment ago. I mean, how many would you have to buy before you get the whole kill team? This is obviously going for a particular part of the Japanese market that likes that kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to be critical this time. I'm not often very critical of Games Workshop stuff because it's usually pretty high quality, but this is blind buy stuff. And I don't like blind buy. I think it's a dodgy selling technique. So, sorry, Warhammer heroes. Yeah. Um, you know, there's nothing special here. This is just pure marketing guff, isn't it? I mean, it's just a, it's just a miniature. You can buy it, buy it in a, buy it in a set, buy them as a kill team, then you know you're getting the whole kill team. Instead of having to buy 20 of them to get eight miniatures, if you're lucky. Right, well, heroes, let's put that aside. Well, I'm glad we got the bad one out of the way. Let's get on to some better stuff. But is it? Let's find out. Okay, now before I go on, uh, let me mention my t-shirt. Esoteric Order of Gamers t-shirt. Now, if you go to the website at orderofgamers.com, that's orderofgamers.com, you'll find that you can buy a whole lot of stuff from Redbubble to promote your love of the Esoteric Order of Gamers. And I think it's a rather nice logo. This has been redesigned, this logo. I recently had it completely redone. Um, I actually commissioned an excellent illustrator called Zhu, who did this for me, and then I did some extra stuff on it, and we made this new lovely logo together. Now, it comes in three different versions, and you can get each of those three different versions on mugs and T-shirts and pillowcases and iPhone cases and absolutely anything. Redbubble do a huge range of products, and the logo is slapped on any of them, and you can choose each of those three different types. So go along to the website, go check it out, and get yourself some uh, Merc for the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Sometimes I get photos from people who've gone to conventions and stuff wearing my T-shirts or drinking from a mug as they play a game or something, and it warms the cockles of my heart. It's absolutely lovely to see people out there enjoying their uh, Esoteric Order of Gamers Merc and promoting the EOG. Good on you, anyone who does that. Thank you. So this is the Space Marine board game, and I thought, oh, that sounds pretty cool. Maybe it's a new board game, sort of, you know, probably a simpler one, an introductory kind of one, and I call the Space Marine board game. So imagine my surprise when I opened it up and I started looking through this nice rule book. It's got a nice hard cover and it's all very well. And I thought, this rings a bell. I was looking through the pages and I was recognising the layout. And then I realised it's exactly the same as the Warhammer 40,000 introductory set, which I've already covered on this channel. Now, this has got different components um, and it's a different focus to it, but it's exactly the same rule book, pretty much. Uh, I mean, like page layouts are exactly the same and everything like that. So if you've bought the Warhammer 40,000 introductory set, don't go and buy the Space Marine board game because it's virtually exactly the same. The only difference is that in the introductory set, you get five Marines and two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, maybe 12. 
oh, 10 termagants and one ripper swarm. Okay, you get that? And you get a paper map map. In this one, you get a really nice thick board, which is lovely. So this is probably selling for more. But you get, let me just check the back here, you get 23 miniatures. So you get 20 termagants, twice the number of termagants termagants and two ripper swarms but only one space marine so strangely enough they've, they've sold the idea of this one as being one space marine against a huge swarm of termagants now because the wars are just a cut down version of uh, warhammer 40,000 10th edition they've taken out the wound step as i mentioned when i covered the introductory set there's really you know it's not a space marine board game it's a simplified warhammer 40,000 with one Space Marine against lots of Termagants, which I'm sure would get pretty old pretty quickly. However, like the introductory set, good start for young people. Just, you know, I think it's a stocking filler. Seems a bit early for a stocking filler, doesn't it? And also it's an expensive stocking filler because all these are really expensive. And why sell it with this beautiful, hard, solid, thick cardboard board? Seems overkill, really. I mean, this is a really nice board. Check it out. And it's double sided. So this is basically exactly the same board that you get in the introductory set, but beautifully made as a high quality board. Let's just have a look at the introductory one again, just to make sure I'm right. That was just a paper version like that. Ah, it had a different other side on it. So the paper version in introductory set has that side, whereas this one has two sides of this sort of brown gantry thing. Um, with different designs, I think, but similar, similar. Yeah, they're different designs, but similar. Strange. I sometimes think that, you know, there's obviously people sitting in the Games Workshop marketing department going, we've got all these assets, let's repackage them in, di in a different way. I mean, really, the big thing about um, making miniatures, as I'm sure you'll know, is the moulds for these plastic miniatures. Actually, producing the miniatures is quite cheap because plastic is pretty cheap. And you can churn them out pretty quickly and the moulds last forever. The, making the moulds, which are made of steel or something, is very expensive, like tens of thousands of dollars. So once they actually make them, they can churn them out by the bucket load and make different games like this. So you get those miniatures and then you get some dice and then you get this strange little thing at the bottom, which is like a... But you can cut out counters on the bottom. You know, I just... The only reason I can see anyone buying this is that you're a parent and little Johnny or Julie has said, I want a Games Workshop game. Actually, they'll be saying, I want Warhammer 40,000. And you'll go along to the shop and you'll see that a copy of Warhammer 40,000 10th edition is like $400 or something. And you'll go, no, there's no way I'm buying my kid that. And then you'll look and you'll go, oh, but hold on, there's the Space Marine board game. That's only like 150 or whatever. I don't know how much these cost because they haven't got to retail yet. Um, and also the, the marketing department is identifying different markets and saying, well, this is going to sell better in this market and all that kind of stuff. This is what big companies do. You know, it's not necessarily for us gamers who are into this stuff. Um, but I think it's interesting to see. And it's also interesting to sort of know that, oh, I better not rush out and buy the Space Marine board game if I've already got the introductory game or if I play Warhammer 40,000. There's no reason to do that. Um, but if you want to introduce, uh, you know, a young relative or something to this kind of gaming it might be a, a nice package to give them a nice expensive package but then you're the best uncle or aunt they've got so space marine board game um definitely a niche thing i guess but there you go what have we got next it's combat arena lair of the beast now this has an interesting history this game because the original of this particular little game system was a game called and here it is gore chosen and the designer of this game was James Hewitt, who now has his own company, I think with his partner, called Needy Cat Games. Um, and he did some fantastic stuff back in the little period a while back. It was probably about 10 years ago now. I'm not exactly sure of the dates. But when Games Workshop started to do different games again, they started to expand from their range of basic games. And they did things like the new Warhammer Quest range of games, uh, games like Silver Tower, and uh, Bloodstone Fortress. Uh, there's another Hammer Hall one as well. And they started doing those. And someone heavily involved in the making of this was this designer, James Hewitt. 
who I've chatted to and is a lovely bloke. And um, he also worked on the new Adeptus Titanicus, the revamp of that classic old game, one of my great favourites from the old days. And I have Adeptus Titanicus up there and uh, lots of miniatures for it, all of which I got before Games Workshop started giving me freebies. And I wish I was getting freebies back then because I spent a lot of money on Adeptus Titanicus and I've hardly played it at all. Only because, you know, it's a big game and you've got to have time for it. I really want to spend more time with it because it's really good. The other thing he did was this game Gore Chosen. So um, it was a really nice period. They were sort of doing different types of games and board gamey type games again, like they used to do in the old days. Um, James Hewitt left the company and, as I said, went on to form his own uh, company, Needy Cat Games. Um, and they've never quite recaptured that sort of period. I mean, they're still, you know, Kill Team and Warcry and everything are fantastic. Um, it was just a it was just a little time there in Games Workshop Shop's history where they were bringing out some very cool stuff. They're still doing cool stuff now, but, you know. So this system, Gore Chosen, they've been sort of milking ever since because it's a great little uh, system. And the next one, well, there have been a few, and I don't think I've got them all, but certainly I got this one, I think, last year, which was Combat Arena Clash of Champions. So obviously they're under this Combat Arena banner now, and they're bringing out different versions of it. But really, you go through the rule book, and it's almost exactly the same it's pretty much exactly the same layout with just a few changes. Um, so if we open this one up, and I've just obviously been in here, so this is not how you get it. But if you look at the rule book, it's almost exactly the same. You've got the amble stirs on this opening spread here. And if you look at Clash of Champions in the rule book, well, it's the arena awaits. So that's the arena awaits from the old one. And that's the amble stirs from the new one. You can see the same layout, very, very similar. The one that they've done with this one, though, just to make it a tiny bit different, is that they have um, a sort of non-player character who is the Amble. Now, the Amble goes way back to uh, Necromunda days. In the first edition of Necromunda, it was brought in as a, as a beast that lurked in the Underhive. And uh, it's a great miniature, this new version of it. It's fantastic. There it is on the sprue there. And I've always wanted an Amble. So when I saw that I was getting this set and it had an amble in it, I was particularly chuffed. You know, the game itself is, is quite good. It's a good little short playing game. I love Gore Chosen and occasionally it comes out and I play it again because it's really fun. And these are this is the same system, but really nice to have an amble. So what they've done in this version is that you're all fighting against the each other uh, and you're fighting against the amble as well. And basically the person who is the most wounded during the game gets to control the amble on their turn. So it's a sort of balancing mechanism, really. So that's nice. What they've used is, uh, well, what they've repurposed are the miniatures from Blackstone Fortress. So you'll recognize the characters here from that game, Blackstone Fortress. Blackstone Fortress, that's a game I really wanted to love. I mean, the miniatures are just beautiful. I've painted them all. I've tried to play it though, and it's just frustrating that every time the uh, bad guys have to do something. You have to roll a die for just every single turn to see what they do and look it up on a table. It just seems like a clump clunky system to me, um, which is a, a real shame because it just looks beautiful and the whole design and the concept is fantastic, but just didn't quite take off for me. Anyway, same with Cursed City. You know, those Warhammer Quest ones, they're, they're good and they, they're beautifully produced, but the, the gameplay is just a little bit repetitive for my liking. Never mind. So I won't have to paint these because I've already painted them for Blackstone Fortress. Um, you get some cards in here as well, decks of cards. So this is a card driven system. Uh, when you play your cards, it's got a number of options on the cards uh, that you can choose from to, to decide what you do on your go. There's another deck in here as well. Uh, this gives you some extra things as well. Um, there's wounds and stuff as well. Um, adrenaline surge, damage, dazed, headshot, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here are your character cards that you have. Another little thing about this system, which is cute, is that when you get defeated, you, you get knock, knocked out of the game, but you're not completely knocked out of the game. You get to do one more thing, which is roll on the table, the fate of the defeated table on the back of your card. And this can do, you know, weird things to sort of break up the gameplay a little bit. So um, you can do nasty things. So, for example, on this one, um, if you roll a two to three, you get swarm. Swarming parasites distract a fighter, select an opponent. They must discard an action card from their hand at random. So it has various effects. Just a little way to keep you in the game once you've been knocked out. But you do have uh, a particular set of weapons on the front here. You've got a little uh, hex thing showing you uh, their area of effect and their hit and wounds values. And of course you have unique uh, actions as well. 
you've got a nice little counter sheet. Um, this is the sort of energy board. Different actions have different modifiers to your energy level on this board. And the energy level is uh, tells you how many initiative cards you shuffle into a shared initiative deck. So uh, obviously more energy, you get more actions, which is a very neat little system, very simple and works really well. So that must be, those amber ones must be their energy cards actually. Um, so that's, you've got that. And then you've got a nice board, just a small board like that. It's double-sided, as you can see. This is obviously Blackstone Fortress artwork. So lovely stuff. So I do rec recommend this game. It's, it's, it's fun and it's fast and it's quick and it's, it's a good little combat game if you feel like uh, this kind of thing. And uh, I like the fact that they've added the anvil as well just to make it a little bit more interesting. But, you know, they haven't strayed too far from the formula. Combat Arena, Lair of the Beast. No doubt they'll be making Combat Arena games until the cows come home. They'll probably be repurposing miniatures from other sets to make these little games uh, for ages. Because, again, it's the kind of thing that you just go into a store and, you know, it's a great present for someone to just get them into the worlds of Warhammer 40,000. Um, we actually need, I, I think there was a fantasy version as well. Um, I don't think I've got that one. I'll have to have a look and see what that one is. Not something I play very often, of course, because I'm playing more complex games. But um, for younger, younger gamers and people who aren't into the to the world yet, great stuff. Well, there you go. Hasn't this been fun? Just a whole lot of different stuff. Just chatting about Games Workshop. Here we are, the latest Necromunda core rulebook. Necromunda, what a game. What a game. I really go back with this one. And actually, when I think of Games Workshop, I think of Necromunda because when it first came out, and I know I call it Necromunda, everyone else calls it Necromunda. I call it that because the Spanish for world is Mundo. So that's how, what I've always called it. So I'm going to keep calling it Necromunda. I don't care. The thing with Necromunda, of course, is that the original system was great and it came with a whole lot of terrain, which I've still got in boxes over there. Um, it had some fantastic cardboard terrain that had plastic wall pieces in it as well, which was super cool at the time. I mean, when a, when a set came out in the in the 90s, early 90s or late 80s that had terrain like that, it was just, wow, amazing stuff. Um, and I played lots and lots of games with it, mostly with my friend Will, who you've seen on our battle reports. Um, and I love it. And the thing is, is that now games have come out with more streamlined systems like Warcry and Kill Team. And Necromunda is showing its age, but I imagine there'd be a huge outcry cry if they brought out a new version of Necromunda and they simplified the rules, because part of its charm is its clunkiness. There's so much going on. I mean, a lot of this is background stuff, but there's a lot of rules in here. Um, it is kind of complex, and it does use the full sort of roll to hit, to wound, to, to save system that uh, Warhammer 40k has. Um, and it's, it's kind of like... If you want to do something in Necromunda, there's another rule for it. And it just adds rules until there's this huge pile. And of course, recently they had Ash Wastes, which is the box set that introduced vehicles. And were they going to bring in some kind of streamlined way of using vehicles, using existing rules? Like hell they were. No, they just pile rules and tables at it like mad. Just threw them at it. So sadly, we haven't seen as many vehicles as I'd like to see. I was hoping they'd release more vehicles. There's only been a few, so maybe Ash Waste hasn't taken off as a concept yet, um, but I hope they don't abandon it because, as you can see from one of our battle reports, we did a battle report of, of Ash Waste. It's a huge afternoon's gaming. I mean, you really got to get into it, and it's a brain strain because there's so many rules. The good thing is, is that they're all in one rule book now, which is fantastic, um, and I'm, I've got a summary of both the Necromunda rules and Ash Waste um, but, of course, there's just so much background. So Necromunda is not just about the rules, of course. It's about the huge campaign system, and that is all covered in here. So if you want to play a campaign of games with your Necromunda gangs, which is best to do, of course, with a group of people, um, Necromunda it can be fantastic. Sadly, I've never had to had the chance to do that. I've never had a dedicated group of people who were devoted to just playing Necromunda for, for a large period of time. Um, but it would be amazing because the thing that Necromunda does is cinema. It's so cinematic. Uh, you get fantastic moments and you get attached to each one of your characters. They become a personality, which is uh, fantastic. Even in just a one-off game, they, they have personalities because they'll do stupid things or they'll roll some stupid thing on a table or they'll fall off a gantry or they'll get run over by a bike or something like that. Again, go and look, watch my battle report because you'll see all this kind of stuff in action. 
it has so much personality as a game. And I think one of the reasons it has so much personality is because the rules are so clunky and there are so many tables and all the rest of it. If it was simplified, it would probably strip away some of that personality. So this is one of those these games that I, I don't really want them to change too much. I kind of love old ne Necromunda and all its sort of crazy amounts of rules. So this is a beautiful book and it's great to have it all together in one. They've changed a few little things and, you know, I won't go into huge detail. It's just a, you know, a, a slight change to the, to the flesh wounds, I believe. Only if you're a Necromunda player will these things have meaning for you. Um, but flesh wounds now, uh, let's see if I can find it. Yeah, so if you get a serious injury, um, that means that uh, if you suffer more than one serious injury result, each additional result after the first causes you to suffer a flesh wound. So they've made it a little bit nastier. Very slight little change. I mean, someone must be sitting there thinking, you know, let's make this little change. Oh, and the other thing is the lasting injury table has um, sort of been backdated to an older version, which is uh, more complex and has more stuff in it, which is good, uh, which is funny because, you know, wow, they simplified the lasting injury table. And someone said, no, it's too simple. Let's go back to the old complicated one. Um, it just adds more stuff. You can get eye injuries and hand injuries and hobbled and spinal injury and feebled and head injuries. And again, this is all part of the personality because you've got your character and then he gets some kind of, you know, he gets hobbled or spinal injury or something and instantly that, that particular miniature has more character. And of course, in the old days, what people used to do is actually model these things onto their miniatures. So they'd modify their miniatures as they went along and they had they got new gear or they got new injuries and stuff like that. I don't think anyone bothers to do that kind of stuff anymore. Anyway, it's got a lovely, um, the usual sort of background material about Necromunda and what's going on there. The comprehensive rules, rules including the ash wastes, uh, vehicle rules, rules, of course. And then from, let's see, um, uh, the campaign starts, where does it start? Oh, you've got psychic rules as well. I've never used psychic rules. Campaign rules start from about here. So all of this stuff is campaign stuff. Huge amounts of tables of all the different types of weapons and describing those, all the different skills they've got as well. A lot of the stuff that you don't tend to use in one-off one off, off games, of course. Heaps and heaps of scenarios. Um, all your ash waste stuff that were in the ash waste rules about weather and all that kind of stuff if you're outside. Um, and heaps of stats. And, you know, lovely pictures. Terrain setups. Now, of course, this is great. And it's a really big, thick book. The one thing it doesn't include, of course, is all the special rules for the different gangs, which are still, unfortunately, all in separate books, which is so frustrating. I wish they'd bring out another hardcover book with all the special gang rules in one book. That'd be great, wouldn't it? The problem with the new release of Necromunda is that it was spread out over so many books and things, it just got so expensive. So if you wanted to buy a Delac gang, for example, who were the bull guys, who I really, really liked, sneaky bull guys, not only had to, did you have to buy the box of the miniatures, but you had to buy separate gang walls as well. And then you're talking hundreds of dollars just to get one more gang. So there is no sort of, as far as I know, no comprehensive book for all the gangs together in one. And I suppose as soon as they did that, once they released a new gang, that'd be obsolete. But it is frustrating that you've got to buy it because when you buy a new gang or a book, a lot of stuff is repeated. You've seen it all before. You don't you know, need it. And sometimes you just want the gang stats. They should work, actually what, do what they do for Warhammer 40,000 10th edition now and just release the stats or something and leave all the campaign information if you want to get the book. Anyway, so if you're an absolute completist um, and Necromunda player and you want the latest book, you can get this. Um, if you already have Necromunda and you're having fun playing it, you know, I don't really see it. If you've already got the Ash Waste book, for example, that's got a comprehensive uh, Necromunda rule set in it. This has got a few small changes on it, um, in it, and none of which are absolutely crucial. Though maybe that changing the flesh wound, adding a flesh wound for extra serious injuries is, you know, that can change things a little bit. Um, so nothing crucial here. I just think if you're a completist or you're getting to Necromunda from the start, this is a really good thing to have. Because again, it's not cheap. It's a big, big hardcover book. But if you're a huge Necromunda fan like me, you'll probably be rushing out to buy it anyway. Well, I hope I haven't bored your socks off um, talking for so long about all these things. I've just been sitting here. It's a Saturday afternoon. I've been outside having a picnic 
it's been a lovely day and I thought I'd come in and just talk about Games Workshop and, and, and show off some of these things. The only thing I don't like is this blind buy model. <coughs> Sorry, don't like that. Everything else is cool. As I said, this is just a rework of the introductory game, except with one Marine and lots of Terminators. Present for, for your niece or nephew. Um, a rework of the Combat Arena system, going back to Gore Cho Chosen. Always a fun little game. Nothing heavy at all. It's just a fun little combat game, for especially for a little group of players, three or four people, something like that. And finally, if you're a Necromunda completist and you must have the latest version of the rules, you don't have to get this for the rules because there's just a few extra things, but it does bring it all nicely together into one core rule book. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, as Again, my name's Peter, um, Esoteric Order of Gamers. Go and get yourself some merc from the website at orderofgamers.com. I've got a Patreon channel if you want to support the channel. Esoteric, well, not the, just the channel, the website, which has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of rule summaries and references, which I've made over the last 10 years and more. Actually, I started doing them way back in 2004. Unbelievable. So there are like 450 of them there now. Um, and you can download them for free. So if you want to support all that uh, work that I do for uh, gaming in general, go along to my Patreon channel where you can sign up as part of the EOG community. And also I've got a Discord channel where people chat and talk about games and show off pictures of their miniatures games and what they're doing and the stuff they're painting and stuff like that. It's a great bunch of people. Go check it out. I've talked enough. I will see you next time. Bye for now and good gaming, everyone.